stability testing in according to the quality guideline ICHQ1A, which is the second revision, emphasizes the stability testing criteria to be fulfilled for successful stability testing. Thereby, it is requested to issue the comprehensive documentation data needed for the registration application of the new drug substances and products. Documentation package, this includes for example the stability test protocol. There will be given information on the batches which are tested, container closure system, storage condition, storage period, testing specification, although they have to be issued a stability report with details on the defined analytical methods, the results achieved along with evaluation, conclusions, statements and the summary. Let's go further to stability testing. Stability testing is a complex process which involves factors influencing the stability of the product which consequently are affecting the quality of the product. Consider active ingredient stability, the interaction of active ingredients and exhibients, the formulation process, which is the mixture, the dosage form, the manufacturing and the type of packaging selected. All these parameters are important for the stability of the product. Acceptable stability requests a product to remain within its specified limits throughout the period of storage and use, which means the same properties and characteristics as possessed at the time of packaging shall be kept until its consumption. Here we talk about the physical properties which must be remain. Uh, that is in order to avoid physical change, which influences the biological availability. Then there's the chemical properties. This should be kept as chemical change may lead very often to higher amount of degradation. And microbiological properties, these are important as exceeding the maximum number of acceptable terms. This is harmful and dangerous for the patients. There are guidelines for approval and acceptance which are going to be followed. This is ICH guideline or FDA guidance and GMP regulations and stability testing. This evaluates the effect of environmental factors on the quality of the product to predict a shelf life, determine proper storage conditions and suggest labeling instructions for the product. Drug development process. This starts with the exhibients, which is a substance formulated alongside the active ingredients. This is also called bulking agents or fillers. This could be lactose or paraffin, water, ethanol. All this is used as a thickener of soft capsules or talc. Then we have the new drug substance, which is the active product ingredient, and this has to be tested for stability and impurity. Then we get the formulation development. This is the composition of the drug uh, substance and the exhibients. And then this has also to be tested in regard to stability, exhibients, compatibility, formulation, interaction, and additional to the testing of this finished product also, packaging is very important for the stability testing uh, and this has to be considered. So we have here primary packaging that could be ampoules, vials, containers, blister packaging. That is the one it is in direct contact with the dosage form. And we have the secondary packaging. This is a packaging which is used as an additional layer of packaging, normally not requested for hygiene, preservation or protection of the drug itself. And it will not be in direct contact with the drug. It is important to determine and assure the identity, potency and purity of the ingredients as well as those of formulated products. ICH. This is an abbreviation 
and that is International Council of Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Pharmaceuticals for Human Use. This is a global initiative and the organization has about 17 members and 32 observers. It wants to bring together regulatory authorities and pharmaceutical industry to discuss scientific and technical aspects for pharmaceuticals. Develop also ICH guidelines and achieve greater harmonization worldwide to ensure that products are safe and effective and in a high quality. And determine stability data package for new drug substances and drug products, which are sufficient for the registration application within the three regions of European Community, Japan and United States, which refers to the climate zone 1 and 2. Stability uh, testing is used in order to establish how the product changes over time under environmental factors such as temperature, humidity and light. For drug substances, stability testing determines the retest date. Uh, that is the time frame during which the drug substance is expected to remain within its specification and therefore can be used in the manufacturing of the drug products. And it helps to establish data to support setting API specification and data to support submission of drug product. And for the drug products, stability testing is necessary to fix the shelf life of the product. This is the duration for which the product is safe to be used and retained within the therapeutic effect. And also it helps to establish recommended storage condition and to issue the data to support setting specification for the drug product. Coming now further to the testing, there is the first one, which is the stress testing, which is a forced degradation study. The forced degradation study is an exposure of the drug substance or drug product to different stress conditions, which results in relevant degradation products. During the pre-formulation, it supports the selection of the compounds and exhibients for the further development. And for products, it provides information on the degradation mechanism and the potential degradation necessary for the manufacturing process and also for the packaging. The guideline requires conducting forced degradation studies under variety of conditions as pH, light, oxidation, dry heat separation. So there is mentioned should examine the effects of temperature in 10 degrees increment, e.g. 50 degrees, 60 degrees above accelerated testing, the humidity to be examined at 75% uh, RH or greater, it should be carried out on a single batch of the drug substance. Testing in solution should also be performed across a wide pH range, either a solution or suspension. And also photostability testing is an integral part of stress testing, that is the testing along with the light. Important here is always to get primary degradation and not completely degradate API. And when the objective of stability study is stipulated and the method is a certain, the drug will now be evaluated under a much larger scale and now a stability study is performed and here we are talking about the long-term studies, accelerated studies and intermediate uh, studies. Long-term testing, that is stability studies under recommended storage condition for retest period or shelf life proposed or approved for labeling, that is the real-time testing. Or the accelerated testing, studies designed to increase the rate of chemical degradation or physical change of a drug substance or a drug product 
by using exaggerated storage condition. It is necessary to do long-term testing and accelerated testing. That is a must. And then there comes also intermediate testing into effect in case accelerated testing cannot successfully be done. Then the starting is here at 30 and 65 percent. Uh, that is provided on the fact if long-term testing is done at 25 degrees and 60 percent RH. Let's go further to the storage testing. Uh, here we can see the general case which applies if the drug substance is not covered by a subsequent sections. Here there is stated that long-term testing uh, has to be done at 25 degrees 60 percent or 30 degrees 65 percent. The minimum time period covered by data at submission should be 12 months and it must be in a limit of plus minus 2 degrees and plus minus 5 percent RH. At least three primary patches at the time of submission will be tested and the testing is every three months first year and then uh, after registration process you have to go on of course with testing then it means every six months the second year and annually thereafter uh, continue studying to cover the full uh, storage and shipment time. The accelerated testing that is done is 40 degrees 75 percent. Uh, this is six months uh, for the registration uh, purposes and here we also have uh, remarks of plus minus two degrees and plus minus five percent RH. And the intermediate testing which comes into effect if accelerated test fails and long-term testing is done at 20, 65 degrees and that means we have here um, the remarks also plus minus two and it is done at 30 degrees and 65 percent RH. Let's go further to the storage in refrigerator. Um, this means products intended for refrigerated storing, for example vaccines which might be stored under refrigerated conditions or DNA oligonucleotides. Here long-term testing is at 5 degrees for 12 months and here we are in a limit of plus minus 3 degrees and the accelerated testing here has to be done at 25 degrees and 60 percent RH and uh, this is also for six months and limit is plus minus 2 degrees and plus minus 5 percent RH. Storage in a freezer, uh, this is actually very rare uh, here the testing has to be done at minus 20 degrees for 12 months in a limit of plus minus 5 degrees. In the absence of accelerated storage, the testing of single batch at elevated temperature, for example 5 degrees plus minus 3 percent or 25 degrees plus minus 2 uh, degrees for appropriate time period to address short effect term excursions outside proposed library storage condition is requested and here uh, that is for shipping and handling. And there is storage below minus 20 degrees. That is case by case. It's very seldom. That is also for vaccines. Uh, so here, uh, for example, could also be lower than this minus 20 degrees. Then we have the testing in regard to the impermeable and semi-permeable containers. That is the sensitivity to moisture or potential for solvent loss. That is here the concern and that means if the product is packed in impermeable containers, the testing can be done under any controlled ambient humidity conditions. If we go for the semi-permeable containers, that means it allows some material to pass through but disallows other material to pass and that is aqueous based products which are packed in semi-permeable containers. This should also be additionally to physical, chemical, biological and microbiological stability evaluated for the potential water loss and this can be done under lower humidity and here uh, the customer can decide if to do it at 25 degrees 40 uh, percent RH or 30 degrees 35 percent RH. Alternatively uh, starting at higher humidity is uh, possible that is deriving the water loss at the reference relative humidity through calculation. 
Uh, here accelerated testing is also mentioned that is 40 degrees 25 percent or uh, also intermediate testing in case accelerated testing fails. ICH uh, guideline uh, covers climate zone 1 and 2. Here on this chart we can see uh, the different climate zones available on the globe and here we have also mentioned WHO and there is referring to climate zone 3, 4A and 4B. Climate zone 3 this is climate hot and dry and here the testing shall be done under 30 degrees and 35 percent RH. For the climate zone 4A which is hot and humid climate the testing is for 30 degrees and 65 percent and for climate zone 4B the long-term testing shall be done at 30 degrees and 75 percent RH. So that means that there's a coverage of the global zones worldwide and we have here the worst case which means for one and two climate zone testing 2560 for climate zone 3 and 4a 30 65 percent and climate zone 4b 30 75 percent rh all these parameters are covered by the memat climate chambers our constant climate chambers HPP ECHO, which is mostly efficient for the use of long-term and accelerated testing under all these climate conditions. Or our climate chamber ICHL, uh, which can be used for the photostability testing. Please kindly get now more details and information from my colleagues, who is introducing to you the most important features of our MEMAT climate chambers, mostly useful to successfully perform the manifold stability testing. <music>